on New York City. The Big Apple, the concrete jungle, the city so nice, they named it twice. We need to get a good look at that infamous skyline. I'm convinced if we get to the top of the Empire State Building, we'll get the best view of modern Manhattan. Let's take the stairs. Just kidding, definitely hop in the elevator. Imagine, we're going to the top of the Empire State Building, the location of some of the most famous movies of all time. Sleepless in Seattle, Elf, King Kong. Whoa, wait a minute, what's that? Our elevator stalled? Oh, that's not good. Yep, and those are the lights. Okay, do not panic. Do not panic. I think we're going down. Yep, we are officially in a free-falling elevator in a skyscraper with over 100 floors to go at over 60 kilometers an hour. So you may be thinking to yourself, is there any possible way to survive this? I mean, there's no way, right? Well, Brainiacs, in this video, we'll give you the ultimate survival guide on how to live and tell the tale about how you survived a free-falling elevator. Plus, we're talking about quicksand, piranhas, fires, oh my. But before we dive in, don't forget to smash that notification bell so you can keep up to date on all of our survival videos. Might save your life one day. Oh right, you're still here. Okay, we'll get back to you in a minute. Moving on. Woo! Okay, back on solid ground. Now, because you spent way too much time browsing Netflix, we know you've based all of your expedition expectations on Indiana Jones. So you don't have a whip, at least you got a hat. Now let's say you watch Raiders of the Lost Ark and become inspired to make your way to the desert. Not our first choice, but whatever. As you stroll along, you find yourself beginning to sink. No, you're not getting shorter, you're in quicksand. Think quickly. Here's how to survive getting stuck in quicksand. First of all, make yourself as light as possible. Toss any articles of clothing like backpacks or jackets that may be weighing you down. This will prevent you from sinking any quicker than you already are. Remember to keep your arms up and out of the quicksand to free up your hands so you can grab a sturdy branch or tree trunk or even a friend's hand to pull yourself out. Your best bet to escape the vacuum of quicksand is to backpedal and walk towards more solid ground, ideally where you were standing just before you started to sink. Whatever you do, make sure that all of your movements are slow and deliberate. When you're stuck in quicksand, your whole body is basically getting sucked into a sand vacuum, so move slowly. Otherwise, you will surely decrease your odds of escaping. Once you're out of there, grab all your belongings that you tossed to the side and be on your way. Oh, and don't forget your hat. Let's say that while on expedition, you come across a river. There's no way around, so your only choice is to move forward and onward. Easy peasy. That is, until you notice the river is infested with deadly piranhas. Common problem, we've all been there. Just for you, Brainiacs, here's how to cross a piranha-infested river. First of all, you definitely do not want to cross the river if you have an open wound. Piranhas are attracted to the smell of blood, but lucky for you, piranhas do not generally attack humans or large animals unless they're already dead or injured. If for whatever reason you absolutely need to cross that river, be sure that it's at night. Virtually every species of piranha rests at night and when awakened in the middle of the night will swim away rather than attack. As you maneuver through the water, swim or walk across quickly and quietly. Try your best not to create large disturbances in the water. Lucky for you, piranhas are not so commonly found unless you're in the backwaters, slow-moving rivers, or floodplains of South America. But South American brainiacs, you better be on the lookout. Okay, so you tried the Indiana Jones thing and well, that was interesting. Let's just say that you won't be bragging about your profession as an archaeology professor or professional treasure hunter anytime soon under your Tinder profile. But hey, at least now you know. No, you're more of a city rat. I can sense that about you, which is why you ended up in New York City in the first place. Which reminds me. Okay, so you're free falling down 102 stories of the Empire State Building. Don't worry, Brainiacs. If it makes you feel any better, in 1945, Betty Lou Oliver, an elevator operator, plummeted 75 stories down the Empire State Building, and to this day, she holds the Guinness World Record for surviving the longest elevator fall. So listen up. Here's what we're going to do. Unlike those myths you may have heard, jumping at the moment the elevator touches the ground will not significantly improve your chances of survival. The most it'll do is decrease your speed by about three kilometers an hour. Not to mention, there's a good chance that upon jumping, you may hit your head on the ceiling of the elevator, causing a major concussion. So save your hops and lie down on the floor of the elevator instead. Spread your arms and legs across the entire floor and lay absolutely flat. Engineers and physicists claim this will help distribute the force of the fall to your entire body, increasing your chance of overall survival. When you feel the time is right, cover your head with your hands. With an impact like that, you'd have to protect your head from the debris that will fall from the ceiling and the surroundings of the elevator. Experts agree that this is the only realistic way to survive such a fall. Just ask Betty. Wow, what an adrenaline rush. Let's get you to the hotel and rest that pretty head of yours, huh? Ah, some good shut-eye. That'll be good for you. Wait a minute. Is that 
smoke I smell? Uh-oh, it looks like a fire. And as much as you'd like to run out the front door, down the lobby, and out the main gates, you realize you're on the eighth floor. Well, Brainiacs, here's a guide to how to survive a high-rise hotel fire. First, dampen and soak as many materials as you can in cold water. If the fire is far away, then make your way to the closest exit. Use towels, washcloths, bed sheets, and blankets, and use those wet clothes over your mouth and nose to prevent taking in any nasty, smoky air. If you're certain fire is far away from you and it's safe to evacuate the building, stay low and keep one of those damp towels over your mouth and nose. If the fire is right outside your door, wedge those wet towels and bed sheets in the crack to keep the smoke out. Turn off the fans and air conditioners that could draw smoke into the room. Open the windows slightly and signal to rescuing personnel using a white towel or flashlight. If there's absolutely no help in sight and breathing becomes more difficult, kick through the wall into the adjacent room, especially in closets because it's mostly drywall. This will be easier to tear down. Even just a small hole can help bring in some good clean air into the room. Now, this is your absolute last resort, but if you can't breach the wall, consider climbing out onto your balcony and down to a lower floor. But again, we don't claim you're Spider-Man, so as long as it's safe, stay where you are as long as possible. Okay, so that hotel idea was a bust. Let's get you to the hotel across town, on the first floor this time, and close our eyes after an adrenaline-filled day. Oh, look, there's a car already waiting for you. Wait a minute, why is the trunk open? That's odd. Okay, now stay calm. You're in the trunk of a car. Turns out, Indiana Jones, your amateur treasure hunting got you into some major trouble. Fear not. Here's how to escape from the trunk of a car. First, check to see if the car has seats that will go all the way down. Look out for any materials like a latch that you can pull, which will prompt the seat to fold over. You can then escape from one of the side doors. If this is not the case, many cars have a button by the driver's seat that will open the trunk of the car. There should be a cable that runs from the release lever or button to the trunk. Look for the cable underneath the carpeting or upholstery. If you locate the cable, pull on it to release the trunk latch. If you can't locate it, look for a tool in the trunk. Under that same carpet where you can locate the spare tire, use a screwdriver, flashlight, or pry bar to latch open the trunk or dismantle the car's brake lights, which can be done by yanking wires and pushing or kicking the lights from the inside. Then signal your way to safety by grabbing the attention of oncoming traffic or pedestrians. And just like that, you've managed to survive every sticky situation. On second thought, maybe you are built for the Indiana Jones life. Eh, we'll give you some time to think about it. After all, you know how to survive everything by now, right? If you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe for a healthy dose of how to survive videos. Later, Brainiacs.